Hey everyone, in today's tutorial we're going to build one of the most powerful features behind Amazon's success, a machine learning based product recommendation system. The goal is to create a system that provides users with a ranked list of products they're most likely to purchase. This type of question is most commonly seen in companies where recommendation is a core part of their business, including Amazon, Netflix and Meta. We'll implement the solution using AWS services, as it's the most widely adopted cloud platform in the industry. That said, every AWS service we use has an equivalent on Azure or Google Cloud Platform, so you can easily adapt this architecture to meet your own project or interview needs. So for example, each node will have a title on the right, which names the cloud agnostic technology. The logo on the left will either be a generic logo or the logo for the AWS implementation of that technology. So here is the target architecture. As you can see, it has four major sections, data collection and processing, model training and evaluation, model deployment and serving, model monitoring and feedback. We will go through each section and each node contained within that section. We will also review at a high level the models implemented. Hey guys, this is Sean from TryAccept. Please show support by liking and subscribing. If you have any questions, we will answer them in the comments down below. If you really want to help the channel, visit tryaccept.io and sign up for our interview preparation platform. Okay, so typically in your interview, you'll need to define the requirements. And the most common framework to do this is by splitting them into functional and non-functional requirements. So first up, functional requirements, which begin with data collection and processing. The system must collect user interaction data, such as clicks, views, purchases, product metadata, and reviews in real time. Next, feature generation and model training. The system must train a model which can recommend products to users based on their features. Following this, recommendation serving. The system must provide real-time and pre-computed recommendations through a low latency API. Personalization and cold start handling. The system must personalize recommendations based on user behavior and handle cold start scenarios with fallback strategies. And finally, for functional requirements, we're going to need monitoring and feedback loop. The system must track performance metrics such as click through rates, latency, model accuracy, and enable automated retraining when performance drops. The non functional requirements typically are very similar between applications, and if you watch many of my videos, you can skip ahead as these are fairly standard. First up, performance. The API response time must be under 100 milliseconds at the 95th percentile. Scalability the system must scale horizontally to support millions of users and products globally. Next, availability. The recommendation service must achieve 99.9% .9 uptime with fault tolerance architecture. Following this, security and compliance. All data must be encrypted in transit and at rest, complying with GDPR or CCPA rules. Finally, maintainability. The architecture must be modular to allow easy updates to models, algorithms, and components. Okay, so first up, data collection. So in your interview, you may be given the data sources available to you, or you will need to define what they likely could be. In our case, we will have three sources of data. User events, which contains product clicks, product views, purchases, search logs, amongst other features. Product catalog, containing metadata and categorization of products. And finally, we have product reviews, which sit in between product metadata and user events conceptually. Whenever new information is added to any of these data sources, it will be treated as an event and streamed to our system. This of course gives us a scaling issue. This is a huge amount of data to be streamed, particularly the user events. To handle this, we will implement a streaming platform. This streaming platform will be Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is a distributed event streaming platform designed for high throughput, low latency data pipelines and real time applications. Furthermore, it has built in fault tolerance through its data broker replication strategy, where it replicates data points across its brokers, which are essentially individual Kafka servers. 
Specifically, we will use AWS's fully managed version of Kafka called AWS MSK or Managed Streaming for Apache Kafka. So the data collected by this will be stored in S3 buckets ready to be transformed and processed. Now we have tons of data stored in S3 buckets, but it's not yet ready to be leveraged by any model. We need to transform this data into ML ready features. So what types of features should this system create? I'm going to list groups of features and the individual features themselves. So if you want to skip to the end to just read them, it makes total sense. Okay, so first up, user behavior features. These features will capture general user behavior such as click-through rate, session length and frequency, time since last visit, preferred categories, and add to cart and purchase ratios. Next up, item product features, which describe the products we're recommending. So this could be category and subcategory, brand and price range, popularity score, discount offers, text embeddings from product descriptions. Okay, next, user item interaction features, which measure relationship between the user and a given item. This could be user's historical rating or engagement with similar items, a similarity score, number of times viewed, added to wish list, or not. Okay, and finally, we have aggregate or derived features. So features engineered from historical data. This could be user lifetime value, average spend per order, product co-occurrence matrix, recency, frequency, monetary score or ORFM, and finally trend features, is this product gaining popularity? So what will we implement to do these transformations? We will leverage Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an open source distributed computing framework designed for big data processing and analytics. It allows you to process large data sets in parallel across clusters of machines with high performance. There is a specific AWS fully managed implementation of Spark called Amazon EMR or Amazon Elastic Map Reduce, which comes with built in integration to S3, so it fits nicely into this architecture. This transformed data will then be placed in a feature store. The purpose of a feature store is to firstly store data, but secondly to version it. Feature stores come in in handy if you ever need to retrain on a specific set of data. So we will leverage Apache Cassandra for our feature store. On top of holding the previously mentioned features, we will also implement a metadata table that records the data of a training job and the ranges of data used to train that job for each set of features. So for example, on a training run, we may use indexes 1000 to 100,000 for click-through rate. That information would be stored here for future reference. The AWS implementation of Cassandra is AWS key spaces. Next up, model training, which is one of the two main pain points of all machine learning platforms. First, we will define the type of model we are training, in this instance, a collaborative filtering model. So a collaborative filtering model is built on a very, very simple concept. Users who have behaved similarly in the past will behave similarly again in the future. This means that the system primarily leverages user item interaction data in order to make its predictions. Now, there are largely two primary types of collaborative filtering models, memory-based and model-based. In short, the primary difference between the two is that memory-based directly uses the user item interaction matrix to compute similarities between users or items at runtime, while model-based learns a latent factor model that summarizes user item interactions into low-dimensional vector embeddings. So that's a lot of words, but the important downstream impact of knowing the difference is related to scaling. The memory-based model does not scale as well to millions of users and products with a complexity of big O, M times N in terms of memory scaling. Furthermore, the matrix it leverages will become extremely sparse, making neighborhood-based methods weak. 
In short, it just doesn't scale as well as the model-based approach. The model-based approach has some nice benefits with scaling, as it reduces the massive matrix into low-dimensional user item embeddings. It further can benefit from optimization strategies such as alternating least squares. In the subset of model-based approaches, we will use a matrix factorization model which perform best with explicit and implicit feedback features of which we have both from user ratings and their purchasing behaviors. Okay, so now how will we train this model? And we're going to do something interesting. Due to our model being a collaborative filter, model-based matrix factorization approach using alternating least squares, we need iterative optimizations over a sparse data set which Apache Spark supports. Furthermore, Spark's alternating least squares implementation is optimized for this scenario. Once again, we will use AWS EMR, in this case, to train our model. Now we have a number of artifacts which need to be stored, including user and item embeddings, as well as model configurations. We will store all of this in an S3 bucket. In terms of automating this training, you could schedule it nightly, weekly, or monthly. Furthermore, we could expose some form of event-based execution which triggers when the performance dashboard detects a certain level of drift. Now, of course, you are going to ask where are we tracking the model's performance at training time? For this, we will use a custom performance dashboard which reports on important metrics such as recall at K and NDCG, or normalized discounted cumulative gain. If you want, you could use an out of the box solution such as weights and biases. Okay, just briefly, I'll define those two metrics I just mentioned. So recall at K measures the fraction of relevant items that appear in the top K recommendations. It shows how well the system retrieves relevant items within the first K results. For example, it tells us of the first 10 product options, how many were relevant to that user. And normalized discounted cumulative gain evaluates ranking quality by considering both the relevance and the position of items in the recommendation list. Relevant items appearing earlier or higher in the list contribute more to the score. So to phrase it easily, it's asking of the first 10 product options, how many were relevant to that user and were the most relevant higher in the list. Okay, so now model serving, which we will leverage a REST compliant architecture to implement. We will utilize the Fast API framework as Fast API is both fast to build, but also quite a performant Python framework, and I like it. We will deploy this on Kubernetes, an orchestration platform which will manage the Dockerized Python Fast API instances. Kubernetes, or k 8 is an open source container orchestration platform that automates the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. It ensures your apps run reliably across clusters of machines by handling tasks like load balancing, service discovery, auto-scaling, rolling updates, and self-healing, or restarting failed containers. In short, Kubernetes lets you run containers, like Docker images, in production, at scale, with high availability and resilience. So the AWS implementation of this is called EKS, or Elastic Kubernetes Service. To supplement this serving layer, we will implement a Redis cache, which will hold in the most common queries and results over the past eight hours. This will reduce computational load. The exact implementation of how to calculate the most common queries is your homework. To implement this, we will use AWS Elastic Cache. We will also stick an app gateway in front of this application using AWS API Gateway. Okay, so on to the final section, model feedback. As you saw earlier, we have a performance dashboard for the training stage. We will centralize all performance monitoring on this platform. As a result, we will leverage telemetry and logging to calculate important live performance metrics, such as click-through rate, drift, and latency. This information could then be used to tell us if an emergency rollback of the model or a retraining is required. Okay, that's it from me. This has been Sean from tryaccept.io. I'll see you next time.